I'm David Garrett. Um, I've been teaching at Reed for about 25 years. Um, my specialty is 17th and 18th century Andean history, and particularly um, on the Highland Peru, the area around Cusco. But at Reed, um, I teach in most of the varieties of the humanities, except um, East Asian humanities. And um, I teach pretty much all of Latin America, um, from kind of pre-conquest to the present, from Mexico to Argentina. Greetings, I'm Professor Jacqueline Dirks. I went to Reed as an undergraduate and I got a PhD in American studies at Yale. And I've been at Reed even longer than David. I've been here since 1991. And I teach uh, US politics and culture, by which I mean um, the ideas that make people, uh, influence people to do the political things that they do. Um, I teach uh, women, gender and sexuality in US context. And I cover about the 1890s through the 1990s, although I'm teaching a class right now that ends in 2004 or 2005 with Hurricane Katrina. I am not a contributor to our humanities programs, but I am a longstanding member of the American Studies Committee. And so I'll be talking a little bit about that interdisciplinary major. And I am also teach my classes in US Women, Gender and Sexuality um, are classes that count toward, we have a really informal uh, gender studies. It's not really a major, but you can take classes from various departments uh, and put together a gender studies thesis. So that's what I do. And first, let me say history is at Reed part of the division of history and social sciences. And those are really the departments that engage in kind of a systematic study of human society. Um, and in particular, history focuses, I would say, on kind of understanding changes over time from, you know, the earliest moments of history where we have evidence, like five, 6,000 years ago, up to the present, and really trying to understand how human societies change in terms of human agency, causation, and action. Most of our classes really address front on questions of historiography. And that's kind of the meta discipline of history that is thinking about how, kind of the history of how we thought about history. Um, and that is to say the way we would think about questions of, oh, I don't know, um, say the civil war in the United States are very different now than they were 50 years ago than they were 100 years ago. And pretty much any class you'll take at read Right, and we see that as a real kind of counter to presentism. The, the way we view things today is not the only way they have been viewed. And so that will be a real kind of central point um, of a lot of our classes. The other thing is that um, the history department, like um, other read departments, really emphasizes conference-based classes. So they're mainly discussion. I mean, there'll be lectures, but a lot of discussion. Um, and the maximum is 24 students. And again, like all the other classes, uh, majors at read, and quite unique um, in the country is that you write a year long senior thesis. To be a history major, you don't really have to decide till your sophomore year. Um, I'm doing the requirements and you'll see we only require six history classes at the 200 or above level. And we have a bit of a distribution in that you should study different things, but they're very simple. You have to start to take one class that focuses before 1800, one that's after 1800, not too hard. And then you have to do at least one class that focuses in Europe one in the United States and one outside of the United States and Europe. And you can double dip. So if you do a medieval Europe class, that's both pre-1800 and Europe. And then also um, to be a history major, you must take one of the year long sequences in humanities past the first year Hume class. So that would be modern European, early modern or East Asian. In addition to that, since we're part of history and social sciences, you have to take two classes in two other social sciences. So all told, it's about 12 classes, I think, um, and thesis is 14 units. The thing about history is you pretty much study anything. Um, so the thing we teach vary a lot. Um, most of us, we have 10 people in the department and I think we try to do most of us a kind of three year rotation. So we each teach like six or seven, eight classes in rotation. We have specialists in kind of US history in addition to Professor Dirks. We have Josh Howe who works on environmental and Mark Minardi who works on uh, colonial and Republican. Um, 
We have a number of Europeanists who cover everything from medieval up to really 20th century intellectual history and British imperial history and the Commonwealth and sort of global colonization. Um, we have an East Asian historian. Um, and so we offer classes in all of those fields. One thing I will say about the history thesis is that we work very hard to let you choose your thesis topic. Um, so you don't have to work on something. In fact, I've only advised two or three theses in the 17th century Andes. Um, and I've probably advised about 40 theses. Um, so our goal is to work with you with an advisor to think about how you approach a question that you find interesting um, from a kind of historical disciplinary um, sort of, yeah, position. American studies majors have a disciplinary concentration. It's usually history, sociology, or um, you'd be in literature in the English department. And we call it an add-on major. Uh, so that you, uh, the base major, you decide what you wanna major in and you satisfy um, almost all of the requirements in that major, uh, the departmental and divisional requirements. And then you add on um, two units in the American subject matter that you're interested in. Um, you have to take two units in American subject matter in fields that are outside of your concentration. Um, we also uh, have in the past asked you to take uh, at least one class, um, maybe two in uh, American history. I think we're, uh, we're in the middle of changing how many units that might be. When we say application to the majors by the, it, it, admission to the majors by application, that means you should talk to somebody who's on the American Studies Committee. And we like you to explain why it is that you want to concentrate um, and, and what, what do you think you're gonna do your thesis on? What are, what are the kinds of interdisciplinary concerns you have. Um, and then uh, if you're accepted to the major, we'll design an American Studies qualifying exam um, for the people who are in the major that year. And all everybody in, in American Studies, whether you're thinking about it, whether you're already committed to it, once you're a senior or junior and a senior, you're expected to attend our American Studies colloquia. And what we do is um, students, uh, folks at Reed and outside speakers uh, present a short paper or, or um, uh, on their on their work which is usually again roughly or vaguely some some topic in uh, American studies and it's generally speaking it's North American but it's not uh, confined confined to that uh, and and we uh, they give about half an hour presentation and then we have half an hour uh, of discussion and it's all very lovely and collegial. And again, you can drop in and, and the highlight in the C in seniors year is that um, the senior American studies majors always give a presentation in the second semester. So as they're nearing, um, as they're writing up their thesis, um, they get what two of the, one of those sessions is, uh, is claimed by um, American studies senior and that's always quite lovely. Does American studies go up to present day America or is there a cutoff year at some point? That's why there's a, a, a ver variety of uh, base majors that you can take, right? So if you were uh, based in English, um, you might well do a contemporary uh, novel or writer or literary problem, and that would be fine. Uh, you might well do, I think we've had at least two Obama theses that were sociologically based, right? Um, but his, history, history is about the past. <laughs> and um, I, the, the closest uh, I've come is a, a, a new course as I've taught for the first time and has a lot of bugs in it. Um, but is the uh, uh, U.S. politics and culture 1964 to 2004. About how many classes are there focusing um, on African-American history and also Mexican-American history? African-American history, Margo teaches um, a couple of classes focused specifically on that. Um, and then I would say any U.S. history class is certainly going to address um, questions of race and African-American interest. Um, Mexican American, um, we do not have except this year. We have someone, but she was visiting for a year who works uh, largely on Latinx history. Um, I work on Latin American, so I do 20th century Mexico. Um, and when I do 20th century Mexico, obviously, 
do Borderlands which is from the Mexican side. So that's discussed, but that's not the focus. So next year we'll actually have quite a number of classes um, on Latinx and Chicano history, um, but that's not a permanent part of the curriculum just because of the person who's teaching is not a permanent faculty member. Um, CRES, I would say history is really integral to CRES because the central claim of history classes, um, well, also compared to race and ethnic studies, one is that race is a social construct. And so it changes over time and it is very responsive, you know, it's dynamic understandings of race. The way we understand race today versus how it was understood 50 years ago versus how it was understood 100 years ago, they're all radically different. And so, for example, I teach in the fall a class on um, race and ethnicity in the Andes. I think the real contribution of history um, to Crest is to realize that these categories, which seem so naturalized in society, are themselves historically very dynamic. Right now, I have one student who's law school bound. Yay. I have another student who got into all of their uh, choices for um, archive and uh, uh, library science and picked University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I have another student who will go to um, Teachers College at Columbia University and study history of education. Um, and I have two students right now, one at the Berkeley School of Journalism, and one at Columbia Journalism School. Those are for a couple of years ago. So um, don't let people say oh, history, what can you do with that? Um, because you will be able to do lots of different things with a history major. I mean, think about it. history really teaches you how to research, how to synthesize, how to organize and present, uh, how to think about causation. Um, so those are just really fun fundamental skills in a gazillion different pathways.